Hello everyone this is part 6 of what if Deku married Mei, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. 1. Izuku Midoriya vs. Okako Uraraka. 2. Melissa Shield vs. Momo Yaoyorazu. 3. Abara Shiozaki vs. Mina Ashido. 4. Minoru Mineta vs. Mei Hatsume. So I'm going to be fighting Uraraka, and Shiozaki's going to fight. Midoriya lowered his eyelids with concern. Mina. Don't worry, Midoriya, I'm pretty sure that Shiozaki's going to have this in the bag, Melissa spoke putting a hand on the Swan Knight's shoulder. The only reason Mina even got close enough to force Kendo to give up was because she was a close-range combatant. Yeah, Shiozaki seems to be one of those people who can attack from all ranges, Hatsune gave the boy a thumbs up. I'm sure she'll be fine. I sure hope so, Midoriya snapped his fingers. Speaking of which, you're going to fight Mineta. Do you think you'll have this in the bag too? Hatsume hummed and folded her arms. I don't know, honestly. I mean, the arm brace I made for my match against Shinsu has one more use, but he does have that ball-throwing machine gun of his, and who knows what he might be planning. So, in short, nobody will know until the match itself, Melissa summarized. As for me, I'll be fighting Yaoyorazu, this could be tough. I can believe that, Midoriya folded his arms. Not only does Yaoyorazu have the ability to fly thanks to her wings, but she can also create stuff out of her body. So what? Melissa has. Melissa and Midoriya hastily shushed Hatsume, and once they verified nobody was looking at him, they talked in whispers. She's got one for all. That's not an automatic win for me, Hatsume. I still haven't managed to control its full power yet, I'm barely at 12%. That sounds good enough to at least put Yaoyorazu on the defensive. And if you can get her on the defensive, all you've got to do is tire her out or take her out of the ring and boom, you win. She can still fly, Hatsume. And even if I could do something to alter her senses a bit, it wouldn't last long enough to. Why are you guys whispering? The trio flinched and separated, calming down once they saw the people who said that was none other than Uraraka and Yaoyorazu, both looking slightly concerned. Oh oh, it's nothing. Midoriya stammered. W we were just talking about the fact we'll be facing you soon. You're right, Uraraka remarked, taking a closer look at the board. My fight with Midoriya's first, and after that comes your fight with Melissa, Yaoyorazu. That seems to be the case, Yaoyorazu walked up to Melissa and extended her hand. We may be from the same class, but I'm not going to go easy on you. Melissa smiled and shook hands with the swan girl. Same with you. I didn't get to fight Tenko, so I might as well give it my all against you instead. I'll be looking forward to it, Yaoyorazu turned to Uraraka. Now, is there something you want to tell your opponent, Uraraka? The brunette turned to Midoriya, walked close to him, and bowed before she said, I'm gonna give it all in our fight. And don't think that just because you defeat Bakugo that I'm going to be scared of you. He <laughs> he, got it, Midoriya scratched his chin. By the way, I noticed Bakugo looking at you and Mina during my match with him. Do you two have history together? Uraraka smiled, and lowered her eyelids. Wouldn't you like to know? The brunette winked, and left with Yaoyorazu, who waved goodbye and blew a kiss at Midoriya, glancing at Hatsune to see if she would react. Sadly, the most the pink-haired girl did was look at the swan girl confused. Oh come on, that was a clear declaration of war. Isn't she taking this seriously? Well, I gotta go get prepared for my fight, Melissa blurted, getting the duo's attention. By Hatsume, by Midoriya, good luck with your matches. The teenagers waved goodbye, and Melissa eventually left the room and the pair alone. Midoriya, Hatsume blurted, there's something I want to ask you. The boy turned to the gadgeteer and raised an eyebrow. Ah, uh, sure, Hatsume, what do you need? I think you should let Uraraka help you activate your wings. Midoriya blinked, I'm sorry, what? Hatsume nodded, you heard me. I think it would be a nice idea to ask her to help you activate your wings. But Hatsume, the boots you made for me already let me do that on my own, if I ask Uraraka for help. 
You won't get to show off the boots I made, I know, but, Hatsum lowered her head and smiled. When I saw you and Uraraka together, I saw something in her eyes. Something that makes me think she might want you to believe you can trust her. Hatsum raised her head, and what better way to prove that, than by letting her help you use your wings. Midoriya thought about it for a moment, then nodded with a little smile. All right, Hatsum, if you say so. Hatsum returned the smile. Good, now, I think there's a fight you need to prepare for. On this corner, he has made an impression, but can he keep going up? It's class 1 B's I Z U K U M I D O R I Y A. Versus, she's already proved to be quite crafty. Will she give a new meaning to the phrase, gravity of the situation? It's class 1 A's O C H A K O U R A R A K A. Hey, Uraraka, can I ask you something? Midoriya inquired. We need to wait until the battle actually starts, so, Uraraka shrugged. I dunno, wait a little and then ask me. Okay then, start. Could you help me activate my wings? The entire stadium fell silent at the statement, with Uraraka in particular looking almost dumbfounded before she shook it off and smiled brightly, eh sorry, what did you say? I'm not so sure how much longer Hatsum's boots can take, and to be fair, it was thanks to you that I got the chance to show off my quirk back on the first week of school, Midoriya folded his arms and tilted his head. So, I thought, why not do something like that again? For old time's sake. Uraraka chuckled. Old time's sake, you speak as if that happened years ago. But okay, if you really want my help, I'll give it to you. Somebody tell me this isn't happening, Mina growled, scratching her head. He asked his opponent for help and she accepted. What kind of madman would allow this to happen? The same madman that'd allow you to participate in the sports festival at all, Bakugo quipped. I'm serious here, Bakugo. Mina snapped, turning back to the arena. If this was a real fight, Midoriya's request for help would get him killed. Except this is a real fight, and Uraraka's is nowhere near that bad, Bakugo sternly stated. Now shut up and watch the fight. Back on the arena, Uraraka touched Midoriya, and the boy glowed pink before he began levitating into the sky. After a couple seconds, Uraraka released him, and Midoriya's wings materialized as he fell and dived straight for the brunette. However, moments before they clashed, Uraraka flashed a satisfied expression, and in his confusion, Midoriya's dive was dodged by Uraraka, who promptly jumped and landed right on his back, grabbing his wings before forcing him to fly up. What a shock! After helping her opponent summon his wings, O-C-H-A-K-O-U-R-A-R-A-K-A has taken advantage of his lowered guard and is using him as a mount. I didn't see that coming. Neither did I, Midoriya exclaimed, trying to shake Uraraka off his back. What are you doing, Uraraka? I'm sorry, Midoriya, but this is a fight first and foremost. Uraraka grabbed the boy's wings and made him dive down. And even if I have to fight dirty, I have to win at all costs. Midoriya looked down and saw Uraraka was making him dive straight for the ground. Not if I can help it. The boy spun around for a moment, and eventually took a sharp turn to rise, causing Uraraka to lose her balance and crash on the grass. Uraraka is out of bounds. Midnight stated, pointing at the flying boy. Midoriya goes to the next round. As the audience cheered and roared in applause, Uraraka rubbed her head and groaned as a shadow loomed over her. This turned out to be Midoriya's shadow, with the guy offering her help to stand up. With a chuckle, the brunette accepted the help, and the duo went back to the stands. Well, Uraraka, if there's one good thing I can say about that fight, is that your strategy was fairly solid, Mina remarked as Uraraka sat on the stands. However, in terms of everything else, Kirishima put a hand on Mina's shoulder. Mina, let it go. Nobody cares at this point. The pink girl looked shocked at the redhead, but she quickly composed herself and turned to two particular students. Yaoyorazu, Melissa, your fight is up next, right? An interesting match up, no doubt, Bakugo sighed as everybody else turned to look at the duo. One's got wings, the other's got, whatever glasses does. Um, I thought I was, glasses, to you, Ida spoke. Girl glasses, then. Speaking of girl glasses sorry, Melissa she turned to Yaoyorazu with a concerned look, then turned to the stands of the pro heroes, where she could spot the red-winged man from before, looking particularly bored. Yep, 
there's no doubt about it, Yaoyorazu's father simply has to be Hawks. Melissa turned back to Yaoyorazu. Still, there's only one way I can confirm my theory. Yaoyorazu, can I talk with you in private? The girl with the black wings looked surprised for a moment, but she quickly shrugged it off and followed Melissa deeper into the stadium. They walked down a couple hallways, until they found a darkened alley where they could hide and speak without being interrupted. All right, so, this might come out of the blue, but I just need to know, Melissa spoke, twiddling her fingers. Your wings bring to mind a peculiar pro hero, so I was wondering. Yes, Hawks is my father. Melissa paused, and blinked twice. I'm sorry, what? Shield, you're not the first one, nor the last one, to wonder about my parentage and since everybody's going to ask me who's my father eventually, I was thinking of revealing his identity to someone just to take the weight off my shoulders, Yaoyorazu calmly explained, gaining a smile as she added, and since you seem to be at least able to keep secrets to yourself, after all nobody knows what's up with your quirk, I figured I could reveal his identity to you without issue. Wait, you told me this to keep it a secret. Melissa asked, her confusion slowly being replaced by excitement. That's assuming people haven't figured it out yet, anyway, it doesn't take a genius to figure out the connection, Yaoyorazu folded her arms. Regardless, now that I've told you who he is, I want to ask you to keep his identity a secret. The last thing I need right now is to be bombarded by the media or my curious classmates. Keep it a secret. Melissa scratched the back of her head. I'm not that good with secrets, actually. Too bad, because now you've got to keep this one to yourself, Yaoyorazu turned around and began walking away. Anyhow, we got a match to fight, so that'll be the end of this conversation. Huh. Oh. Right. Then, Yaoyorazu stopped. By the way, if you tell anybody who my father is, I'll sue you. Melissa winced, and Yaoyorazu kept walking. I get the feeling she's bluffing, but still. On this corner, she didn't get a chance to show her tricks last fight, will she finally get her chance to shine here? It's Class 1A's Melissa Shield. Versus. Also from Class 1A. Can her genius intellect give Melissa Shield a run for her money? It's Momo Y-A-O-Y-O-R-O-Z-U. You know, now that I know who your father is, I'm kind of excited, Melissa confessed as she cracked her knuckles. I never thought I'd fight the daughter of a pro hero. And I share the same feeling, it'll be interesting to fight an inventor who wishes to be a hero, Yaoyorazu remarked, snapping her fingers as she added. I know, how about to make it more interesting, I'm only going to use my quirk, and not my wings. Right, her quirk and her wings are entirely unrelated. Melissa smiled confidently. Fine by me. Start. Melissa immediately charged her legs with 7% one for all and ran straight for Yaoyorazu, who reached for the edges of her tank top, ready to lift it to use her quirk. Or, as the audience quickly found out, she outright took off her tank top, her stomach glowing as she casually dodged Melissa's rush, then rolled her tank top before smacking Melissa's back with it. She followed this by creating a bow staff from her stomach, then using it to smack Melissa in the head. Soon afterwards, Melissa regained her footing and turned around to see Yaoyorazu waving her tank top in a similar way to a flag, with it tied on the bow star for extra measure. Yaoyorazu's smile had a hint of challenge to it, especially when she did the, come at me, gesture. Understanding the message, Melissa smirked before she rushed once again, Yaoyorazu dodging once again and waving her, flag top, as Melissa braked and tried to rush her again, getting the same results. This continued for a couple of times, leaving the hero course students baffled. This feels like a bullfight. Midoriya and Hatsu mentally remarked in unison. I can't watch this, Mina stated as she stood up and left the stands. Eventually, Melissa got tired of bullying around and transferred the percentage from her legs to her arms just as she reached the flag top. She swung her fist, and Yaoyorazu blocked the fist with the bow staff, the impact not only shattering it in half, but also sending Yaoyorazu flying away until she created another bow staff and planted it on the ground, using it as a catapult to throw a punch right at Melissa's face. The ninth inheritor simply blocked the attack with her arms, barely going back a couple of feet as a result. Knees nice shot, Yaoyorazu. She chirped. But how much longer will you last against this? Melissa charged her legs again, and instead of rushing forward, she jumped and transferred the power to her arms as she plummeted down. Yaoyorazu spread her wings and flew high, 
dodging Melissa's ground-shaking attack just in time to fly down and throw an instant counterattack. She created a seemingly ordinary staff from her stomach, then tried striking Melissa with it. However, the ninth inheritor grabbed the staff and held it in place with ease. Is that all you got? She asked with a smile. Truth be told, Yaoyorazu smirked. This staff has a neat little trick. Yaoyorazu rolled up the staff, revealing a button right within her reach. She pushed it, and just as Melissa pondered what it did, the staff itself extended far beyond the boundaries of the arena, with Melissa's weight causing it to snap in two, sending her right into the grass. Melissa is out of bounds. Yaoyorazu goes to the next round. The winged girl dematerialized the staff and took a deep breath before she looked at the pro hero's stands, right where her father was. However, the expression she saw wasn't of approval, or even anger. He looked, concerned. I trained you for nearly an entire year, and you wind up beaten by a simple extending staff. Gran Torino snapped as he repeatedly smacked Melissa's head. Did you forget the first lesson I ever gave you, kid? Sorry, Gran Torino, I really am sorry. Melissa cried, trying her hardest to block the attacks. I was simply caught off guard by it, that's all. You wouldn't have been caught off guard if you had paid attention. All right, I think that's enough, All Might said as he grabbed the miniature senior and held him in place. Young Melissa knows what she did wrong, teacher. I don't think you need to go the extra mile. Are you sure about that, Toshinori? Gran Torino folded his arms. You made the same mistake when you were younger, and it took you twice the beating I was giving her before you realized what you did wrong. The muscular man laughed and scratched the back of his head. Guilty of all charges. Gran Torino took a deep breath and turned back to Melissa. As for you, what happened out there? You started on a good foot, but when the staff came, you froze like a deer. Honestly, I guess I was just caught off guard by so many things, Melissa scratched the back of her head. I mean, mere moments before the fight, I learned the real identity of Yaoyorazu's father. It's Hawks, isn't it? All Might and Gran Torino asked in unison. Melissa sighed in relief. Oh thank God you figured it out on your own. Not that it was very difficult, All Might remarked with pride. There had been rumors circling around about one of the top 10 heroes having a child, with Hawks being one of the most talked about possibilities. Still, for him to be so young, and yet be a father, Gran Torino shook his head. Youngsters these days really take things way too fast. Why's that? Melissa tilted her head. How old is Hawks? The answer's the same as it's always been, the man with the red wings, Hawks, sternly stated, folding his arms. I think you should clip your wings and focus on your quirk. Oh come on, dad, you saw me out there. Yaoyorazu whined. I managed to use my wings and my quirk, in the same fight. Momo, you used your wings briefly, and then you used your quirk. You didn't use them at the same time, Hawks lowered his eyelids. Which is precisely what I'm worried about. If you keep your wings with the ability to fly, you'll have two different power sets to deal with. Oh god, not this song and dance again. Yaoyorazu whined. Yes, this song and dance again. Hawks sternly answered. And we're gonna dance this specific song all night long until you decide to listen to me. Listen, even if I like dancing, that doesn't mean I'll just dance to the same tune over and over again. You don't have to. The only reason we're repeating this so often is because you stubbornly refuse to see my point. When did this devolve into a bunch of music euphemisms? I don't know. The black-winged girl and the pro hero took a deep breath and lowered their head. The latter raised his head first, the former keeping her head low as she narrowed her eyes. Momo, you know I only want what's best for you. Then why won't you drop this, clip your wings, deal? The girl shouted, spreading her wings as she bared her teeth. Why can't you just see I'm happy the way I am and leave it at that? Yaoyorazu flew off afterwards, only to hit her head on the ceiling. She quickly stood up, dusted herself, and ran off, leaving the man behind to rub his forehead as he leaned against the wall. What am I gonna do about that girl? Melissa Shield sat on a bench at the highest point of the stadium, looking at her hand with a conflicted expression. She had just come out of her fight with Yaoyorazu, and her little talk with both All Might and Gran Torino. What's wrong, kid? Speaking of the old hero, he walked up to the girl and sat right next to her. Oh, N nothing, Gran Torino, sir, Melissa scratched the back of her head. Just thinking about something. 
It's about your quirk, isn't it? Gran Torino raised an eyebrow, feeling insecure about it again. Melissa flinched. She really had hoped she wasn't so transparent about it, but it looked like she'd need to work on her subtlety a little more. That, and not ask Hagako for tips again. Yeah, after losing my fight with Yaoyorazu the way I did, I feel like I made joke of, you know what? Melissa put her hand on her cheek. I got this quirk to become the next symbol of peace, and yet I made a fool of myself out there. So did Toshinori when he was your age, Gran Torino chuckled. If anything, you might be taking the same steps as him without even realizing it. Melissa raised an eyebrow. Did he jump at the call too? Oh he sure did, and now that you mention it, neither he nor you have ever told me how you got the quirk. Melissa eyed her surroundings. Is this a safe place to discuss it? Gran Torino waved his hand. Mayor, nobody comes here, and besides I got Toshinori outside to act as a bouncer, so we should be fine. Now, how about you explain what happened? Melissa took a deep breath. Well, I had called Uncle Might to come to I Island in order to test out my latest invention. All Might, in his muscular form, equipped an arm brace that transformed to fit his arm just like a glove, with Melissa standing by his side as she gave him a thumbs up, which he happily returned. He then clenched his fist, reeled back, and shot a 100% punch right at a fake mountain. Not only did the mountain completely evaporate, but the clouds in the sky were destroyed, revealing a clear, sunny sky. But most importantly, the arm brace wasn't even injured. Looks like it works, young Melissa. All Might boomed with a laugh. The sounds of cameras and bright flashes assaulted Melissa for a second until the flashes were turned off, allowing her to adjust her glasses and dust herself off as a news reporter walked up to her side. And there you see it, folks. The latest invention created by the, quirkless, inventor, Melissa Shield. An arm brace capable of containing 100% of All Might's power. The people went, ooh, and, ah, as Melissa rolled her eyes and forced a smile. Now tell us, Melissa Shield. The reporter spoke, shoving her microphone right on the girl's nose. What convinced you to do this project? Melissa pushed the microphone away. Well, I always saw how Uncle Mike constantly keeps holding himself back, because let's be honest, if he walked around at 100% of his power, he could flip all of Japan upside down. All Might and the reporters laughed, though while the former sounded genuine, the latter, Melissa noticed, had a hint of condescendence to it. So, in order to at least let him go all out with his punches, I created the arm brace. It's not perfect, since it can only go three tries now too before it gets completely destroyed. The reporter raised an eyebrow. So even the legendary, quirkless, inventor that's done so many mind-boggling gadgets can't make one that can contain All Might's full power permanently. Melissa took a deep breath and narrowed her eyes. Nobody's capable of making that, quirkless or not. I've come the closest with the arm brace, yes, but it's still just a temporary solution. The reporter hummed. Well then, what's next in your agenda, Mrs. Shield? Are you finally going to reveal your quirk to the world? Or are you planning to create a gadget that can give artificial quirks to people? All right, interview's over, All Might spoke, grabbing and lifting the girl. It's been nice talking to all of you, but we got other things to do. With that said, All Might jumped off the scene, leaving the dumbfounded reporters behind. All Might locked the door and pushed a button, which further enhanced the lock with a cluster of different softwares, passwords, keys, walls, etc. All right, that should be good enough for now, the number one hero remarked, putting his hands on his hips. They should leave in a few hours, so until then. Ugh. The number one hero turned around and saw Melissa laying on her bed, face planted on her pillow. He promptly sat on a couch nearby and scratched his cheek, trying to think of something to say. Well, you have to admit, the demonstration went better than expected. Melissa rose from her bed, dusted herself, and shot a sharp glare at All Might, who flinched as the girl stood up and began ranting. Oh yeah, totally. I especially loved the part where they called me, the Q-U-I-R-K-L-E-S-S -S inventor. Or the part where they asked me when I was going to reveal my quirk to the world. Or, even better, how about the part where they asked me when was I going to create a gadget that could give artificial quirks to people. At least ask me if I'm anywhere near done with my research on artificial quirks. Calm down, young Melissa, all might requested. I understand if you're angry at the media. 
not just at the media. I'm also angry with you. All Might's smile faltered a little. M me. From the very start of the interview, there was no way you couldn't notice I was uncomfortable with having my quirklessness brought, and yet you stood in place, smiling like a giggling idiot until the interviewer went too far. If you had even the slightest bit of common sense, you would have grabbed me and left the scene the instant the reporters arrived. Young Melissa. But no. Let's just stand in place. Let's force ourselves to smile as the media decides to humiliate me on live television. It's not like I should be upset about, oh I don't know, the fact I was born a powerless freak of nature in a world dominated by freaks of nature with superpowers. Melissa paced back and forth, rubbing her forehead to try calm herself down as she visibly fumed from her mouth. The man wanted to say something, but considering his previous statement caused this rant, he thought it would be better if he shut up. It must be amazing to be on your shoes, Uncle Might. Seriously, you're loved by everyone, you bring hope wherever you go, and the part that actually matters, you got one of the strongest damn quirks in existence. Melissa glanced at a mirror, and after taking a quick look at her reflection, she snapped back at the man. Meanwhile, look at me. I've taken into account what you said. I studied hard. I practiced hard. I've been making gadgets since I could make a toy gun in order to prove that I wasn't hopeless just because I was quirkless. Melissa walked up to All Might's face. And what do I get for it, Uncle Might? What do I get? Um. Ah. Uh, I get my quirklessness thrown at my face every single time I make a gadget, or cooperate with someone on a project, or every time I do anything at all. And it's been like that ever since Dad. Melissa suddenly paused, and she looked downtrodden for a moment before she switched back to anger, and snapped at All Might. You get the point. The bespectacled inventor stomped her way to a desk, sat down, and rubbed her forehead some more as she inhaled and exhaled, slowly calming her down until she stopped. Sorry, Uncle Might. All Might reacted at the statement. Whatever anger the girl had in her prior rant was now just gone. And replacing it was a mix between sadness, regret, dread, and fear that sent a chill down his spine. It's not your fault the media's like that, it's not your fault I wasn't born like everyone else. Young Melissa, I just, times like these make me feel so helpless, powerless. With that one sentence, All Might remembered some words he heard not too long ago. Think about it, what's the point of giving more power to someone who already has power? Why not give it to read powerless minority who definitely need it more? Young Midoriya, even if you had a weird way to say it, you gave me the best advice on how to handle one for all successor. All Might smiled. And now, it's time I do my part. Young Melissa, what would you say if I told? I'd say you're pulling my leg, and at the worst time to boot. Melissa sternly responded. I mean, I just had my quirklessness thrown at my face, I whined about it to you, I yelled at you even when you had nothing to do with what the reporter said, and now you want to get my hopes up for what's probably just another piece of advice from you. All Might shook his head. No, young Melissa, this time, I want to give you the offer of a lifetime. Uncle Might, I know I might be following my dad's footsteps as a scientist, Melissa chuckled. But that doesn't mean I want to be your sidekick. No no no, it's something greater than that, All Might sighed. Listen, what I want to offer you, is my quirk. Melissa lifted her head and turned around, an utterly dumbfounded expression plastered across her face. I'm sorry, you wanna offer me your what now? Steam began coming out of All Might's form. My quirk, the quirk that allowed me to become the number one hero. Just as my own teacher did for me, I want to offer it to you, so you can become my successor. Okay, no, you definitely have to be pulling my leg, there's no way there exists a quirk that can be transferred like that. Melissa stated, and also, what's with the steam coming out of you? All Might took a deep breath, and promptly burst into a cloud of steam, prompting Melissa to open the window so the steam would come out. Once it was all gone, what remained was a very skeletal, and also kinda cartoony, All Might. This is why, Uncle Might, what happened? Melissa grabbed her hair. Why do you look like a guy that just did the nasty with midnight all night long? All Might spat out some blood. That's one way to describe me, kid. S sorry, Melissa walked up to the man, took out a napkin from her pocket and wiped it over his mouth. But seriously, are you okay? What's with this form? It's my true form, All Might confessed. 
The real story is very long, complicated, and kind of a downer. All you need to know, is that in my last big fight, I actually got severely injured, leaving me in this form. And the muscular version of you. Consider it a transformation. It's how I used to look before I got injured, but now it's just a temporary buff that I can maintain for a few hours a day. Melissa frowned, and took a step back. And you've had this form since your last big fight, wasn't that over a decade ago? A. I'm not a big fan of keeping track of the years, all you need to know is that it happened a long time ago, All Might took a deep breath and scratched the back of his head. And, now, well, I want to make you the ninth inheritor of my quirk. Melissa lowered her head, and a little smile formed in her face, before it was replaced with a frown, which she kept as she raised her head. If you always had the ability to pass down your quirk, and you knew I was quirkless, why only offer it to me now? Your father and I might have broken apart on good terms, but I didn't want to make him believe I was trying to force you to do something you didn't want to do, all might explain sadly. Even at a tender young age, you showed much more interest in machinery and gadgets than heroics. Even when you became a teenager, you still showed interest in the support side of things, and I didn't want to take that away from you. Then, why me? Melissa put a hand on her chest. Why would you give me, of all people, your quirk? Because thanks to my ignorance, you became the butt of jokes in the world of support, even when you did your job much better than anyone else. All Might lowered his head. The daughter of my sidekick, my best friend, ridiculed for doing something she loved. Then, he raised it with a little smile. Besides, giving power to someone who already has power sounds pretty redundant, don't you think? All Might put a hand on Melissa's shoulder. Why not give power, to someone who needs it? Melissa's eyes became as big as dinner plates, and tears formed at their edges as she covered her mouth with her hands. Uncle Might, I'll do it. Hum, you keep saying that you rushed this decision, but from the way you're telling me, you were definitely hesitant about it at first. Oh no, don't get me wrong. As soon the idea Uncle Might could give me a quirk was planted, I wanted to do it. No questions asked, Melissa twiddled her fingers. But, you know, that day wasn't the best day, and there were so many things happening all at once, I found out Uncle Mike's real form, I was offered his quirk, he told me a bit about his previous big battle, and just. I was having a hard time processing everything. Gran Torino hummed. But once you did, you jumped into the wagon. Yep, I certainly did, Melissa forced a little laugh. And I keep thinking back to that moment every time I doubt myself. Sounds like you think about it pretty often. Melissa let out another laugh, but this one was genuine. How did Uncle Mike stand training under a grumpfist like you? He grinned and bare it, Gran Torino snickered. And he did it like a master. The miniature hero jumped off and began walking to the door. Now come on, let's go down. The next fight is about to begin. Melissa nodded, stood up, and followed Gran Torino back downstairs, feeling slightly better about herself. That, and the fact there was a chance she was gonna see Mina being pummeled to the ground. That also helped. Knock knock knock. Asterisk. Inko Midoriya walked up to the door and opened it. She found an old friend of hers standing outside. I'm glad you could come, Detective Scouchy. It's always a pleasure to work with you, Mrs. Midoriya, the detective replied, bowing down a little. Still, I do have to warn you I'm busy with a case right now, so if you could make it quick. Inko shushed the man, and without missing a single beat, she took him close to the TV and turned it on. The screen displayed a versus screen, showing Shiozaki silently praying while Mina flashed a cocky grin. Is that? Scouchy remarked, his eyes widening at the sight. The supposed apprentice of hero killer Stain. Yes, Inko finished as she pocketed her hands. Apparently, some genius at UA thought it would be a good idea to let that psychopath enter the sports festival, and she's even managed to hurt students already. Scouchy flinched. Has she? She nearly burnt off a girl's arm, and I believe she had something to do with a sudden burn wound in another guy's leg, Inko shrugged. Anyway, that's besides the point, she's out there, she's still fighting, and something needs to be done about her before she goes too far. The detective regained his composure and nodded. I'll get us an arrest warrant immediately, and drive us to the site. Please do so, Scouchy. Inko walked into her room, then walked out, now wearing a trench coat on top of her normal clothes. The longer we take, the more time she has to cause pain and suffering to another hero student. 
Abara Shiozaki stood in front of the board, showing the remaining fights. Midoriya and Melissa had advanced to the next round, as present Mike said before, and the very next fight was between her and Mina. She put a hand over her chest, and closed her eyes as she silently prayed for a miracle to come. Hi, Shiozaki. The greenet flinched and turned around, calming down significantly once she saw the person talking to her was none other than Midoriya, who was accompanied by Hatsum. Don't scare me like that, Midoriya. She chided. I'm about to face the greatest, most dangerous challenge in my life, and the last thing I need is a heart attack. Told you we should have waited until she stopped praying, Hatsum said, gently hitting Midoriya in the shoulder. I was hoping we could reach her before she got into it, Midoriya said, scratching his head with a sheepish smile. Anyway, Hatsum and I wanted to talk to you before the match. If you want to encourage me, I appreciate it, but I don't think any words alone will help me that much in this endeavor, Shiozaki sighed. The match starts in a couple minutes, too, so. Hatsum shushed the vine-haired teen, then grabbed the swan feather on her head and showed it to her. I want you to take this. Shiozaki blinked twice. I don't think I understand. This feather was created by Midoriya, and it allows him to know when you're in danger, among other things, Hatsum explained with a little smile. I also think of it as a lucky trinket that helps build confidence, and considering who you're facing, that's definitely something you need. Mina has already hurt Kendo and Hatsum, and if what Melissa told us is true, she's even gone so far as to hurt her own classmates, Midoriya added. If it's possible, I want to help you prepare enough to give Mina a piece of your mind. And, hopefully, knock her out before she gets the chance to play with your head. Shiozaki looked back at the feather, then at Midoriya and Hatsum's reassuring looks, which made the feather look even more enticing. Even so. I appreciate the offer, but I'm afraid I can't take it. Hatsum lowered her eyelids. If this has anything to do with honor or your religious beliefs, I'll just be blunt with you, none of them will matter when Mina's digging your face into the ground. Hatsum. Midoriya snapped. You can't say that's something she wouldn't do. What I mean is, Shiozaki blurted, getting the duo's attention. As much as I want to accept your offer of protection, I can't accept it knowing that, if Mina finds out about it, she's going to see it as an excuse to go all out. She seems to have it out for you too, for some reason. Midoriya and Hatsum exchanged looks, then lowered their heads with angry looks. Besides, even if I took the feather, I feel like I'd be outmatched regardless, Shiozaki clasped her hands together. I'm not someone who enjoys violence, I completely detest it and would never resort to it. But Mina, she's proven to be quite violent. Even if I did my best, she'd have me beaten in how cruel and perverse her actions could get. Well, if it helps, she's been forced to wear a support item that renders her acid useless at long range, Hatsum remarked, lifting her head and smiling a bit. And your quirk does seem to have a decent middle to long range cover, so as long as you don't get too close, she won't be able to hurt you that badly. And you don't need to beat her either, you can just trick her into falling out of the ring, Midoriya added. Which, now that I think about it, is how many of these fights have concluded, actually. Not that that's a bad thing. Except for the announcers, Hatsum quipped. Imagine them getting all hyped up for an epic battle and then, blam, ring out. The duo laughed for a bit, with Shiozaki looking confused at them before she joined in for a brief moment. Again, Thanks for the offer, but I'll use my own wits to ring her out. Because I don't think I'll be able to knock her out. Hatsum put the feather back on her head. Well, all right then, Shiozaki, if you say so. We wish you good luck in your match, Midoriya said as he gave the girl a thumbs up. Give Ashido a piece of you mind. Oh trust me, I will, Shiozaki lowered her eyelids. And, before you go, there's something I want to ask you, Midoriya. The boy raised an eyebrow. Me. I've noticed you've been surrounded by a notable female presence since the festival started, Shiozaki folded her arms. I don't want to make any assumptions, especially because you seem like a nice guy, but, are you trying to make a harem, Midoriya? Midoriya raised an eyebrow. A harem. What's that supposed to be? You don't know what a harem is. Shiozaki smiled with approval. You really are as pure as I hoped you would be. Hatsum poked Midoriya's cheek. A harem is. Shiozaki promptly slapped her with her vine hair. Shush. Don't corrupt the pure child. Well, anyway, 
if you're talking about how I'm often surrounded by girls, no, I'm not planning to get anywhere romantically with them, Midoriya added. Kendo's just a friend, Melissa's also just a friend, Hatsume's my protectorate, and I'd rather die than even humor the idea of having a relationship with Ashido. What about Yaoyorazu? She's the one pining for me. And I'm not really interested. Could the contestants please head to the arena, right now? That's your cue, Midoriya remarked. Good luck out there. Shiozaki smiled and nodded, clasping her hands and praying once again as she headed to the arena and left the duet alone. So, do you think she's gonna win? As long as she gives Ashido a piece of her mind, I'll count it as a win. Mina, the pink girl stopped, turned around, and saw Kirishima approaching her with Bakugo by his side. Well, if it isn't Kirishima, and my dear little brother, Mina remarked with a little smile. I'm about to have a match, so if you need something, say it quick. Don't go all out. Mina narrowed her eyes and glared at Bakugo. After that statement you gave earlier today, it's quite hypocritical to ask that, Bakugo. I wasn't the one who asked that. Mina raised an eyebrow and turned to face Kirishima, who was looking at her with a serious expression. So, you said that, Kirishima. The redhead sighed and nodded. Mina, I know how you can take things to the extreme, and give an even more intense response. Even considering what Bakugo said at the start, and what your limiting gadget can do, I can't just trust you not to go overboard. HMPH, and what makes you think just asking me to hold back will work? Because I'm the only person outside of Stain who you'd ever bother listen to. Mina's eyes widened for a moment, before she lowered her eyelids and smirked. Clever, Kirishima. I guess you're not just a sack of brawns after all. The pink girl turned around and began walking away. Oh, and by the way, Kirishima. The redhead raised an eyebrow. You passed the test, facing off one of the big three already made you look like quite a hero. But actually trying to convince me to hold back makes your heroic potential very clear. With that said, the acidic girl kept walking until she left for the arena, leaving the guys behind. When she did, though, they exchanged concerned looks. Somehow, one way or another, it felt like Mina was still gonna pull something out of her sleeve. Alrighty everybody, we're ready to begin the next match in the tournament. Aunt W-E-H-A-D-O-U. You bet, present Mike. And this match is going to be real interesting. Neja chirped, clapping repeatedly as she chirped, because we got a fight between a pair of students, an impressive one, and a devilish one. Change, devilish, to, insufferable, and I'll agree with you, but that's besides the point. Let's get this party started. Both Shiozaki and Mina entered the arena, the latter flashing a smug grin that immediately got on Shiozaki's nerves. It was quite amazing that even after so long since their first interaction, Mina still acted like the same infuriating little shit. On this corner, can her faith prove strong enough against the devil she's about to face? It's class 1 Biza Bara S-H-I-O-Z-A-K-I. Go, Shiozaki, Midoriya exclaimed, raising his fist. Show that jerk what class 1B can do. Monoma shouted, pounding his knuckles. Avenge Kendo. Um, I'm still alive, you know. The redhead growled in exasperation. T that's not what I meant. S-H-I-O-Z-A-K-I-I-I. The teenagers turned around to see Melissa not only standing up but flailing her arms up and down while shouting at the very top of her lungs. Her classmates looked rather surprised by this, but she paid no attention to them. Break beyond your moral self-restriction. Give A-S-H-I-D-O the biggest beating of her life. She doesn't deserve mercy after everything she's done. M. Melissa, calm down, please. Shimura weakly pleaded, clasping his hands. You're giving us unwanted attention. Seeing the guy was right, the blonde inheritor huffed and sat back down, adjusting her glasses as she folded her arms. Versus. I want to make a joke about her fighting Shiozaki's faith, but I really don't want to give her any ideas. It's class 1 A's Mina A-S-H-I-D-O. The pink girl smirked as not only Shiozaki's glare fell upon her, but also glares from the entirety of both class 1A and 1B, with a glare from Hatsume thrown in. Ha ha. I can sense everyone's disapproval from here. Mina chirped as she stretched. I know I should feel a little ashamed because of all the terrible things I did, but I'm sorry, the sheer hypocrisy being shown all around me is just too much. Shiozaki raised an eyebrow. Hypocrisy. 
You're probably wondering, the pink girl continued. Well, think about it. In this world, heroes react, and villains do. Theoretically, a hero does nothing but wait until a villain shows up, and they then get up their lazy butts to stop them. So I, using the same, rational falsehood, that a razorhead uses all the time, decided to help everyone gain a more proactive streak, and everyone disapproves of it. Mina flashed a sadistic grin. Isn't the hypocrisy in that statement just delicious? Start. Shiozaki wasted no time and she planted her hair on the ground. The hair spread across the ground in front of her until it burst from underneath Mina, the pink girl jumping up just as the hair contorted in the form of a cage. I guess you're just as blind as everyone else, Mina spoke with disappointment as she generated some acid from her palm. Well then, have it you. Mina swung her arm and shot the acid, which dissipated into the air mere seconds after it left her palm, not even reaching anywhere near Shiozaki. Oh right, this little thing on my neck forces me to stay close range. I totally forgot, my bad. She didn't forget anything, Hatsum thought. She's just screwing around. Mina fell on top of the cage, and jumped off before she ran towards Shiozaki. The vine-haired girl immediately reacted by morphing the cage into several vines that tried to strike Mina as she ran. However, no matter how fast they struck, the pink girl simply dodged each and every strike. She even managed to grab one of the vines to inspect it closer. Blunt ends. Come on, Shiozaki, this just won't cut it. Mina created some acid from her palm and cut the vine in half with it, doing the same with the other vines before she continued her run. Shiozaki detached her hair from the ground just as Mina got close, with some steaming acid coming out of her palms. Shiozaki took a deep breath, clenched her fists, and closed her eyes as Mina smirked and lunged straight for her. Shiozaki simply ducked, waited until Mina was right on top of her, then unleashed an uppercut with all her strength, right on her stomach. The resulting force of the attack not only sent Mina rolling off to the side, but it also stunned her long enough for Shiozaki to connect her hair to the remaining vines, and seemingly absorb it. I'm not gonna lie, that was satisfying to see. That looked like it hurt. It sure did. Abara Shiozaki dodged the attack at the last moment and then countered with a strong uppercut. I almost wish this would be the end of it, but this is a tournament arc. It's never that simple. Neja raised an eyebrow. Tournament arc. What are you talking about? I don't know. Mina slowly stood up, clutching her chest as she caught her breath. After doing this a couple times, she chuckled, and looked at Shiozaki with amusement. So, you're not just going to stay on the defensive, huh? Good. You're starting to show promise. Shiozaki narrowed her eyes. The last thing I want from you is any sort of approval. And the last thing I want is a vine up my ass again. Mina smirked as she prepared to run again. But I feel I'm gonna get that anyway. Blushing at the reminder, Shiozaki quickly shook it off and shot another barrage of vines at Mina, who flashed a grin before she sidestepped the incoming vines, sliding all over the place until she decided to stop, and get hit by one of the vines. Her cheek was grazed, but it was otherwise unharmed. Still going keeping the blunt ends, even after proving you're willing to attack. Mina narrowed her eyes and kept running. Just, cause you don't want my approval, doesn't mean you should want my disappointment. Once close enough, Mina grabbed Shiozaki's shoulders and began pushing, with the vine-haired girl grabbing the acidic girl's shoulder and pushing back, keeping them at a standstill. It looks like after several shots from Shiozaki, WHO hasn't moved an inch, the fight has devolved into a pushing standstill. Does this mean one of them's going to push the other one out? Only one way to find out, folks. Keep your eyes peeled. Mina gritted her teeth, constantly gaining the upper hand against Shiozaki, only to go back to the standstill. You have enough upper body strength to keep me at bay, and you still waste your time using your blunt ends. I'm not going to be an action hero. Shiozaki snapped back. I'm going to be a rescue hero. Someone who rescues civilians and deals with disaster situations. That's assuming you don't die first. Mina stepped on Shiozaki's foot, and the girl groaned as she slammed her hair back on the ground, then released it under Mina's leg, quickly wrapping it in place with her vines as she turned up. The hero business that you and all those jerks look up to is not the same as it used to be. What was once an occupation to keep up morale and to give hope to the common folk, 
has devolved into nothing more than a popularity contest between fakers who are more interested in their own popularity than the safety of people. The pro-heroes at the stands frowned, disapproving, yet being unable to deny Mina's claims. Even some of the teachers frowned at this, in particular All Might. E even if that's the case. Everyone lifted their heads, and listened as Shiozaki gritted her teeth and proclaimed. Not all heroes care about popularity. Some care about the people they're supposed to save, which is more than can be said about someone like you. Shiozaki headbutted Mina hard enough to crack her nose, but the pink girl quickly recovered and leaned closer to the vine-haired girl, putting her hands on her back. You're getting angry, aren't you? I knew it, Mina snickered, narrowing her eyes. Behind your facade as a righteous, holy crusader, you're just another irritable little faker, like everyone else in this damn stadium. Mina placed her fingertips on Shiozaki's back and began releasing steaming acid. How do you expect to be a honest heroine if you're not honest with yourself? Shiozaki gritted her teeth and kneed Mina, causing the acidic girl to release her and clutch her stomach before she was kicked right in the teeth. Even with this, however, Mina kept her grip on Shiozaki's shoulders. Come on, be honest, Shiozaki. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Mina scoffed. You could have grabbed me with your vines and flung me over the arena, and that would be the end of it. Cue quiet. But instead, you're keeping me at bay, punching and kicking me to slowly wear me down, until I'm weak enough so that you can give me a beating I'll never forget. I said quiet. And you know, now that I think about it. Mina leaned closer to Shiozaki's ear and whispered. Doesn't that make us similar? Shiozaki's eyes widened as her pupils flashed red for a split second. And in another split second, one of her vines detached from the ground, formed a sharp end, and stabbed Mina right in her right eye, causing her to reel back and scream in back as blood shot from the socket, right on Shiozaki's face. The audience gasped, and among them, Melissa put her hand on her mouth, Midoriya stood agape, Hatsune covered Mineta's eyes just like Shinsu did with Eri, and the pro heroes and teachers stood utterly horrified at what just happened. Holy shit. I expected to see some blood today, but not like that. Present Mike, I'm scared. Somebody needs to stop it. I-A-G-R-E-E. -E. Midnight, put an end to this. The referee flinched and began searching through her gadgets as Mina recovered from the What the hell are you? However, once made the mistake to look at Shiozaki's bloodied face, she was met with a furious glare, eyes diluted to the point they seemed bloodshot, and emanating an aura that she was far too familiar with. For the glare was nigh identical to the glare she got from Midoriya earlier. And it was in that moment that Mina felt an emotion she hadn't felt since the start of the tournament. Genuine fear. Icon. Before Mina could finish her statement, vines wrapped around her mouth and covered it, with some extra layers added just in case she tried to melt them away. She whimpered and cried, trying to break free as Shiozaki grabbed her hand and hissed. Oh no you're not. You got all the way over here by trampling others and being an utter dick. I'm not gonna give you the pleasure to just give up and get away with everything like the coward you are. Shiozaki tightened her grip on Mina's arm and began pulling, while the vines keeping Mina's leg in place gained sharp ends and began piercing it. I'm gonna make sure you feel the same pain you gave everyone, with extra interest. Midnight found a small bomb-like object, and removed the pin. All right, that's enough. The pro heroine threw the gadget, and as soon as it hit the girls, it blew up and released a purple smoke cloud. However, a couple seconds after the fact, an ear-piercing scream was heard as something flew out of the cloud, high into the sky. The wind dissipated the smoke covering it, and in their utter horror, everyone saw the object was an arm. A freshly ripped, pink arm. Shortly after that, the smoke cloud covering the girls dissipated, revealing the duo had fallen asleep, and neither looked good. Blood coated Shiozaki's hands and arms, and her hair looked like it was brutally ripped off. But that paled in comparison to Mina. The acidic girl has marks around her mouth, a bloody stump where her arm used to be, a bleeding eye socket, and an exposed leg with several holes formed around it. And, with both girls unconscious, Midnight only had one thing to say. It's a tie. Detective Scouchy's vehicle parked right outside the stadium of the sports festival, and both him and Inko stepped outside and began walking towards the stadium, where the Jumbotron hanging up showed the results of the latest fight. That is to say, it showed the mess left after Shiozaki and Mina's scuffle. Dang, looks like we arrived too late, the detective remarked. No, 
Inko lowered her eyelids. We arrived just in time. That will be all for this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos. Goodbye.